evening, everybody. Welcome to the workshop. Welcome to my Monday Night Live. I'm Mark the Gentleman with Turner, and I hope you're all well. I hope you're all being very creative, making lots of wonderful things in your own workshops. So tonight, helping me out, I've got my three amigos. I've got Pete from Twisted Trees, Hi Wayne Wood Turner. Good evening. And Steve from SK Grass, otherwise known as Sir Drop a Lot. Good evening. Although Terry from TJ Turning did a good impersonation of Steve today. He was dropping everything in his life. <laughs> I hope you're all well. These guys are going to be looking after me tonight, looking after the chat, fielding any questions you've got, saying hello and basically keeping things ticking over. So tonight on the lathe, I've got a piece of you. <coughs> so we're going to turn a bowl from this uh, interesting piece of view and I'm going to try and keep it a fairly basic shape but there's a few dips and inclusions uh, see what we come up with see what we can find in this chunk of you chunk of you now when I come to do the sanding I will be wearing my respirator mask and I will have the extraction going I'm just going to turn with the safety goggles on to begin with. But uh, as we all know, you can be, well, you is toxic. So I'm gonna make sure that we um, protect my lungs because if you're turning you, you've got to be careful. Okay, guys? So I'll make a start and somebody can say who's in. Go on, Pete. Okay, before we start, who's in? Uh, Douglas has asked a question. Do you have Mark? Bowl, hat, yeah. box, the screw top? Oh, see, <laughs> see, hey, friends like you lot. Yes, I've been watching videos all afternoon since <laughs> Terry's live. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Okay, in the chat tonight, say hello. We've got Peter Cochran. Woodburn Paul, Andy Best, Misfit 74, Brian at Hartwood, Dave Oti, Jason Wheeler, Andy Best. I've done that one. Colin, you're late. Woodburn's reviewed by Colin. Douglas Mungham, Terry Bartlett, Ruby Fair. from SK, Barry Chitty, Jennifer Stoughton, got Terry from TJ Turning, uh, I think that's it, oh, Neo M. <clears throat> yep, sorry if I miss anybody, but uh, that's on my list. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Uh, Web put resin is just coming as well. Dave. David, I think, isn't it? David? I think it, it is, is yeah. David, yeah. That's David Eisenhower, yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. No, Joe, I didn't say you because you're drunk. Again, there's a possible chance that she may fall asleep when she's drunk. No change there, then. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Mm. <laughs> mm. Rob CP's just joined. Hi, Rob. Evening, Rob. Moving up the list, Pete. <laughs> Doug Mother's just yeah, come in. Hi, right, Doug. How you doing? Do 
Sean. Um, I don't think Mark's got any chance of being on the list. He is the list. <laughs> he is the Joe hit list. Mark is the top of the hit list. No matter yeah. what else happens, Mark will never lose that place. No, oh, I don't know. The way you guys are going, there's a really good chance. Yeah. Door 60's just joined. Evening. Is that a Evening split going door. through there, Mark? Hey. Is that a big split going all the way up through there? Uh, yeah. It doesn't go more than about three mil into the edge up here. But it does kind of go to about there. So it goes all the way around here to about there. So I was going to do a tenon on the bottom. Yeah, I've been making it a bit more shallow as well. Yeah. Some of that way. So where did this piece of wood come from, Mark? Is this a piece your neighbour gave you? Uh, this was a piece that a local furniture maker gave me. Gave me a couple of big pieces of you. And, Mark, uh, the short one's just come in. So it's Cornish U. David Deadman's just joined. Hi, David. Howdy, everybody. Well, thank you for coming along. Stop and have a look at that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go a bit narrower, a bit thinner. Katie's just joined us. Cornish made 1982 evening. Katie, hope you're well. I suppose six minutes late isn't enough to get cakes, is it, Katie? No. Katie makes fabulous cakes, though. So I'll forgive her if she is. So Ruby's saying, Mark, your picture's frozen, but on mine it's okay. How about everybody else? Is yours all right, Pete? Wayne? I'm watching in StreamYard. All oh, right. Uh, just looking at YouTube now. It's fine. Yeah. Just refresh uh, Ruby and see what happens. We think YouTube's having a few issues, to be honest. Just getting myself down to something. Uh, that crack's going to stay there for a while. Vicky Jenkins has just joined. Hi, Vicky. Douglas has said, Mark, it might be worthwhile talking to Ruby about turning the baller. Yeah, I dare say I'll be speaking to her about it. Sure, but I won't really let you forget. Don't make it happen too soon because we won't have anything to tease you about if you do it too easy. Chris Nunn's in and Gary Letitia as well. Good evening, guys. Copper Al Wood turning. Hi, Martin. How are you? It's just That's us. Rob. Oh, it's Rob, is it? I thought it was Martin. Yeah, no, it's Rob. All right, evening, Rob. Uh, 
I'll try and keep this, keep that in if I can, because that's a nice interesting piece. So let's get this bottom sorted out. So Clive Williams, go on. Go on. Clive Williams is asking, Mark, how dry is the piece? It's fairly dry. I'd say it's probably about 12, 15%. Matthew Gallagher has just joined us. Good evening, Matthew. And True Rex Lee has joined as well. We've got 71 watching at the moment, Mark. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. So I will use a skew just to square up this tenon. Cool. Douglas has been a bit demanding. Next Monday, that way you'll have time to practice and get inf information. That's a bit demanding. Oh, yeah, apparently I'm doing this all next Monday. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, God, this. Uh, when and Ben heard that he's going to turn it out of Ebony and give it away. <laughs> Wendy's just joined us from Tomb Pish Crafts. Good evening, Wendy. So what I've done there, formed the tenon, and I've given myself a nice flat shelf for the jaws to sit against. Just there, I don't know if you can see, uh, wrong camera. Uh, it's stuck. So there's the shelf where the jaws are going to sit. That's the tenon itself. So I'm just going to make sure that the sides of the tenon are nice and square and the bottom is nice and flat. So that's enough of the skew. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, Terry's work this afternoon was um enough to put anybody off doing skew life. Yeah, it was I can't compete with that. <laughs> not good for him today. He's the skew master. So this is three eighths bowl gouge. PJE's just come in. Hi, PJE. Welcome. Eric Winkle is just joined us. Hi, Eric. Hi, Mark. Sorry I'm late, everyone. You're not late, Eric. Sounds very hard, doesn't it? It was yep. very hard yesterday when I, uh, that was better. See, see, I've got this flat here. Do I go a bit more or do I leave that flat? Is that chainsaw cut flat or is that part of the tree? Uh, I'm not sure. It might be a bit of a chainsaw, but that's gonna it's really oh, gonna well, reduce the size as well, Mark. So I would be inclined to take it a bit further. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna lose that natural just, bit there, though, aren't you? On top, if you do that, yeah, you are. But to get the two flats opposite each other, I would be inclined to cut it again. 
I'd be inclined to turn over to round over the top. Okay, yeah, see that. Because you're going to be taking a good inch off the diameter of the bowl if you turn them flats out. I don't get both. Trevor Reed is Trevor a Reed's just coming. Douglas is asking if you know when the tree was felled, Mark. I don't know. But I do know that it came from a tree in, from a village called Marin Church. Just outside Beard. Still that's that to squeeze up the sail, if you know where the tree Just goes. a tiny little bit of flat there. It's gone on the other side. Might be able to take that down a bit when I do this. So this bit here, I'm going to put a bit of texturing in. So for that, I'm going to use the uh, the mini texturing tool from Robert Sorby. Turn your piece on, turn the speed down to about 450, 500, 495. Just back the tourist off. Glenn's just joined. Hi, Glenn. Evening. Yeah. It's in there, but it's got to tell you, it's hard. Yep. That's in there. And then with corner of a skew. No, I'll do it the other way. I'd hold it flat. That way? Yeah. Yeah. More support. John Scarborough has asked if you can do an overhead view so they can see tool presentation. Please. Yeah. Go find with the other side of that. It's just there. Right, so that's the outside shape done. So I will be putting the extractor on and I am going to put my mask on before I sand this. So I do apologize for the noise. Lawrence has just joined us. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Oh, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. What? 
ちょうどちょうど Right, Wendy's having to leave because her hubby's wanting to watch the football. See you later, Wendy. Take care. Castle's just come in. Good evening, Nick. Howdy, everyone. Colin from Wood Wizardry by Colin would like to know where is your extractor hose gone? We discussed that earlier, Colin. The um, extractor just hose is just out of camera shot. But, uh, best place for the camera to be doesn't show it. So, a bit of a twenty. So that was just there. And Ben Jammer's just come in. Hi, Ben. David Oatley, is, this, is that Cyclone with a four-inch connector on the extraction? Yes. Yeah. Just there. And it's running off of that. Come back. There. Of interest that canvac noise did drop a little bit so the jabber software what did work a bit yeah i think the uh, headset helped i mean the shield helped though didn't it yeah it was noisier at the start than it was towards the end so something was happening douglas is asking mark have you had any issues with the blue barrel collapsing under vacuum no i've got a um don't know if you're going to be able to see it let me just walk around here just under here no you feed me posters right in the way. Camera posters. Just, that's, it, that's it, yeah. Just there, there is a pressure relief valve. So what happens is when this is sucking, if this gets blocked, this collapses to let air in, stops the bin from collapsing. Um, can't remember. Dusk, um, 
What's your name? Sir Dropalot. Steve, Dust yes. Commander. Website is Dust Commander. Right. If you could put the link in, please. Dear Vaughty is asking, where did you get the um we've got to forget the cyclone from because he can only find ones with fifty mil connection. Yeah, but yeah. you can buy you Dust can buy connected you can buy connectors to take it up to 100 mil. The link that Steve's going to put in in a minute, they do the extractors, the cyclones, the pressure relief valves, and the cyclones they do, I think, in three different sizes. And they're very reasonable cost. <coughs> PGE is asking, can I use Abranet abrasive sheets on a bull sand and tool just like the one you're using? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, yeah. yeah. Ruby's having to leave. She can't get a stable internet connection. Oh, oh sorry about that, Ruby. Yeah, storms there last night. I'm guessing the weather's not too good over there at the moment. And Eric's is saying that wood looks almost orange. It is. It is orange. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, um, there's going to be a pretty little bowl, I think. It's a UK timber that makes up for an awful lot of timbers you've got over there we can't get. <laughs> yeah. Right, so this is a link for the, that's called a Dust Commander Dust Anti-Crush Valve. So this is for the Anti-Crush Valve. And then also there's the Cyclone. But obviously, you need to shop about for your cyclones because you can get them cheaper other places. Yeah, so. I mean, I've I got a, a cyclone off uh, eBay, and I just yeah. bought a, um, a connector set from Record Power. If you've got a lathe, you can make your own. <laughs> you could, yeah. Just going to change um, my... Yeah, uh, in plastic. I've mean, got a six-inch cyclone on my system. Uh, six-inch in, inlet and five-inch outlet. And this is for the Dust Commander um, Cyclone. It's only a small cyclone. It's only 35 mil inlet. So, but depending on what you want and depending on how much you want to spend, you I mean I put the rec I put the uh, Axe Minister one on mine. So, so is the old uh, the old grid. Grid. So that was sanding sealer that I put on there, because as I've written on the tin, and we should all know by now, sanding sealer first. Yes, uh, David, I use a 50 to 100 mil connector. And on the inlet, I've got a different type of connector because I use the, um, again, from record power, the two and a half inch, I think it is, semi-rigid um, dust collection pipe. Um, what's the one that comes off the Axminster? It's 63 mil, isn't it? I think it's 68 mil or 73 on the outside, I think. Yeah, that? so that's the one off the, no, the one off the, off the Axminster, which is the AC50E. I think it's 53 mil. So I've got a 53 or 63 mil down to a 53 mil adapter, which I just turned out of a piece of wood. And then I've turned another adapter to come off the 53 mil inlet for the cyclone to go to the 100 mil pipe for the extractor, which is just here. Hmm. Right, so turn the lathe on, turn the speed down to 250, that'll do. And work the grit in. <coughs> and you keep working it in. And the beauty with the grid, especially with a piece like this, with you, you're getting no dust. It's the whole reason why Yorkshire grid was invented. It's an abrasive paste, gives you dust-free sanding. It starts at about 240 grit, and as the grit breaks down, it works its way up to about 1,000 grit for the original, and all the dust and the schmeckis is collected on the paper. Just keep working it in for a couple of minutes. You can feel as the grit starts to break down, the sound changes, the feel of the paper on the piece of wood changes as well. So William Kennedy 
is asking the benefits of a psycho compared to a cartridge filter. The benefit of a psycho is that the dirt doesn't actually get into your extraction. So with mine, I only clean my filters out about every two months, and there's only just light, fine dust over them, other than all the crud going into your um, actual extraction system. Yeah. That that blue barrel there is a 120-litre barrel. It's probably about 60 litres of dust and dirt in there at the moment. In the extractor itself, the, the Hoover section, there's probably only a few tablespoons of dust in there. Mine runs off a chip collector and I have the extractor connected up to my um, cyclone, which is on top of a garden waste bin. And I've got the same bag on that uh, chip collector that I put on there oh, two and a half, three years ago. It's about an inch in the bottom of it. Everything else is in the bin. It's just, dust, feel the, it's just dust you get caught up. Once you can feel the, the grit's done its job, speed the lathe up. About 800. Get a different piece of paper because uh, there is an inclusion in the outside of this bowl, so it is tearing the paper up a little bit. But speed the lathe up. Work it with a piece of paper until the paper comes away clean. A lot of people say that cyclones are not worth having. I think they're, they benefit. Yeah, well, bit. I do. I think it's great. Saves the filters. Oh, saves the motor. Um, yeah, that's what I've got. I've got the 100 mil Axe Minister cyclone. There you, you've got the big one, haven't you? The metal one. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And the thing I like about it is it comes apart. So if you ever want to clean it out, it's there. It's just unclips around. There's just a big bang clip around it. Yeah, unless you've got scientific equipment, it's hard to measure the difference in pressure. Obviously, anything you put into a, a suction line yeah. is going to change it. But the fact that the filter doesn't block means that the loss is made up for. Just a clean filter. All I will say is I spend the money and have one of those anti-crush valves in because um, depending on... About... Sorry, got Sorry. I think they're about 10 quid, aren't they? They're not, a, they're not a great deal. I can't remember. I did look, but I can't remember. I'll have to see if I can find it again. Um, I don't remember worth... how much mine was. I don't think they're that expensive. No, I think that they're... Maybe a tenner with the with the postage. So there's six six euros, then whatever your postage is. Yeah. So, but um, what I found with mine was when I turned my second motor on, I had to adjust the valve because it was sucking the valve in. They are fully adjustable. They come with two yeah. springs. Depending on the unit you're using to provide the suction, you might only need one spring. You might need two. And there's a little nut on the top of the the um, center of the valve that you can adjust to increase or decrease the tension in the springs that you use. So it's really fine tunable. Yeah. Right, so that's a bit of camera on. Hampshire Sheen high gloss. Just keeping this bowl simple. I'm going to let the wood do this. Speak for itself. John Scarborough is asking, do you vacuum up your floor with your dust extraction system, Mark? No, I've got a brand new, um, brand new Hoover that I had to buy the other day. Because my old Henry died. And I've got, there it is. You can see just there. A new Titan, 40 litre Hoover from. He's jumping up and down in the background saying, he doesn't vacuum the floor. He just, needs head, he just needs to learn how to use it now. That's the new trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, only bought it for, I only bought it for Brian's sake. I don't use it. I just sit it there in the corner. Don't Hoover up. Just turn on the again. So a bit of Hampshire Sheen high gloss. No pressure on the paper, just just the pressure of the paper onto the wood with your finger. I'm not actually pressing, just letting the the friction between the wood and the paper build up. Just work work it in. And I can see the reflection of the paper in the piece. You got the same problem with that camera as I used to have with mine, mate. Red hands. Oh yeah. Mind you, I've been in the sun a lot this weekend, so 
Oh, there was no hot tub this weekend. Got it. Hey, to tell you how the other half live. Life's harsh, isn't it? Life's harsh. Yep. <laughs> right, that, that's the outside done. So there's, there's that inclusion. Bit of texturing. Don't know if you can quite see the texturing. Yeah, but it's nice. Actually, I'll just uh, go over that with the paper towel. Glenn is saying, bit. I only bought a lathe with reverse to wind SK up. You won't wind me up, Glenn. You've got no chance of that, Sunshine. <laughs> yeah. Because Steve's got your diamond belt. <laughs> Payback. <laughs> Douglas is asking, is it that orange? It looks coloured. No, that's the natural colour, Douglas. Yeah, that's that's you. It is. Does, I will say it does look really on the end camera, it does look really orange, but this it, obviously this is yeah. the proper colour. Now, I do have a little bit of wax in some of the uh, texturing, so I'll just nice. pick that out. Get yourself a bottle brush, Mark. I do have one somewhere, but I can't find the bloody thing it's where it, it's, it's probably sitting with all my other pencils because as we all know pencils uh, do love to disappear you've got um, a pencil pot again hey you ought to turn yeah. yourself a pencil pot yeah then I could lose the pencil pot <laughs> yourself robert lapsley's just joined evening robert how are you oh here we go it's a bit hard for this but i'll just oh don't do that don't do that <laughs> so daniel would like to know mark what flavor of coffee did you have today flavor of coffee a bit random hmm. but i had uh, Coffee flavored coffee today. That's the only type. Of, that's the only flavored coffee you can get, isn't it? What flavored coffee? No, is. coffee flavored. That's it. <laughs> but Every, are... every everything else <laughs> isn't coffee. Well, it is. Other flavor. Other flavors. Well, are no, it's no. <laughs> it's on, it on your menu. Oh God, he started. <laughs> Ginger coffee. Right. Let's try that again. When you go to start your lathe up, make sure you don't have the spindle lock. Because it tends to wear the belts out on the lathe. Yeah. I'll hide it before you come, Glenn. I'm going to bury it in the garden so you can't find it. <laughs> Luckily, I don't run with my belt super tight, so give myself a little bit of a chance if I ever get a catch. Take that off. Eric's got to go. See you later, Eric. Thanks for coming over. Here's Eric. Now, before, I don't know if anybody noticed, because I'm using a tenon, before I did any of the finishing, I put the tailstock back up, put the center mark in. That is vital. Without that, when you come to turn the piece around to turn the tenon off, can't find the center. Rob CP's been getting beanies. Is that the stuff Andy drinks, isn't it? Beanies, coffee. Andy oh, yeah, from, from Littles. Yeah. yeah, all the different flavors. Cool. Didn't do that very well, did I? Do you know what? I'm going to have to do that again. Sorry about this, folks. Got a high spot, mate. Yeah. Bottom of my tenons, just a fraction to. So this is going to be fun. You've got to make sure this tenon fits properly. 
So Andy Best has put, looks like Dust Commander now only ship to EU. No option for England, UK, or am I missing something? I don't know. Let's have a look. Not said that since before Brexit, so... Uh... Yeah, I bought mine before Brexit, so... Douglas, you can get a screw chuck that will fit in virtually any chuck. Try um, RDG tools or Kronos. That's C H R O N S. C H R O N O S. Kronos. John would do one as well. I was looking at those yesterday. Well, I wasn't looking at that, but I saw that in passing. Put your centre mark back in. I well, remember, I'd have missed that step. Especially live. Yeah, I've done it too many times. Or I haven't done it. Then you've had to no, Douglas, find. the one that Mark is using is specifically made for the sea jaws on the Axminster chuck. But the worm screw? Yeah. I'll show you again. So, these are the sea jaws. That would be groove rather than dovetailed, yeah? You know, if you can see, it's got a groove just there, and that fits in to the groove on the jaws. So it locks it in permanently. That's the, the worm screw itself. And you can actually remove the, the worm screw if you need to just clean it or replace it if it gets damaged. Because it, 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 it comes with a smaller screw as well. Yeah. That's better. Yep, that's better. Yes. Goody, goody. Right, where we go. That's just about a thousand. Chris Glandall's just come in. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Nice job you did the other day, mate, on that uh, bowl you coloured. Rob CP is saying, don't put a small groove in the wood in the tenons, though, when you're using the seed yours. I always do, Rob. Always. This is when I'm using the seed yours. I always put a small groove in with my um, thin parting tool. Dave, as you saying, he's asked me the one that's the... Grub screw keeps working loose. Use some Loctite. Yeah. If you don't want to use Loctite, use some Hylomar gasket seal. You can use that on the old motorbikes. Harley Davidson in particular. It absorbs vibration very well. So I think. Um, you're unable to order from this website now. All right. Because it only goes, Commander. When it goes country, it just goes to all the European countries. England's not on there. So it must have changed it since we come out of Brexit. Then. So let me see if I can find another website local or on the UK to find one. That's a shame. Hmm. Vicky's asking, does the U have a smell? 
Mm, I wouldn't say so. Not really. No, not really. Don't let it fool you, though. It is toxic. Rob's saying the instructions for the um, screw to, or for the C jaws is not to put the groove in to hold on a tenon. Um, but I always find, especially working on spindle, on spindles, if I put the groove in, it holds the wood supremely well. And it is actually very difficult when you part off to get the piece of wood out of the, the jaws because it's yeah. held that well. And I think in, in theory it will crush the timber on that narrow edge and make its own groove. But I agree with Wayne. It's, uh, well, depending on timber some to some extent, but setting a groove means that you're on the right side of it. Yeah, you called it, but it was just too much work, mate. Yeah, Same exactly. that yeah. So last year. Oops. Brian, so you missed that. Can you do it again? No. Because it's <laughs> silly. stupid. Right, just going to have to sharpen this a sec. This is very, very hard. Bear with me. For those who don't know it, you is a very hard wood in uh, the heartwood. Quite soft in the softwood, but and the more it dries, the harder it gets. It's actually very strange because it's classed as a softwood. Yeah. Well, the tree is a softwood, but uh, the tree is a softwood. It's an, it's an evergreen. Yeah. There again, both woods are hardwood, so you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've got gamma three D in. Hi, Jay. Nice to see you, mate. Good evening. Brenda's son. Right, so I've done both ends of that gouge, so I've got two goes at it now. That's better. This horn's blowing out, so it must be something to do with the football, I reckon. No, I can't find any. Having said that, I've seen cyclones on eBay from time to time that um, shipped direct from China. Yeah, no, this is not the cyclone, it's the anti-crush valve. Oh, the yeah. anti-crush valve. Yeah, I reckon you could make one of those, to be honest, if you wanted to. I sent you a blooming... Yeah. Um, uh, a Springer M5 or M6 bolt nut washer. I'll tell you if what, you've got, got um, you do a small hole and then you have a piece of acrylic, um, like folder cover, thin, thin acrylic over the top mm -hmm. that was stuck into through the hole before it uh, crushed the barrel. So, 
Yeah. That was easy job. Yeah, but I reckon... There are, I reckon videos, there are videos on YouTube about making your own yeah. um, pressure relief valve. It is fairly simple. Yeah. Like Pete said, I reckon if you had some 5 mil acrylic, I reckon you could make one of those. Yeah. Question from Colin, how quiet is your airbrush compressor? Well, I can turn it on now, so you won't hear it. No, very quiet. Yeah. Douglas got a question there. For, I think for you, Wayne. But the um, oh, Mister. Let me grab you up. Yeah, where was that? Uh, Douglas. What I have for a the previous owner put a large diameter screw in as the worm. Yeah. You. I have seen that done. Um, yeah, you can actually you can make your. You can make your own um, worm screw, uh, especially if you want to do the likes of fruit or something like that. Uh, you can actually use your own using a, um, just using a wood screw, a decent yeah. wood screw. I do it when I'm making fruit. I just take a piece of wood, turn it to fit the jaws, and put a screw through the middle. Job done. The best chuck that I had for doing fruit was the um, the duplex chuck, because that had a very small um, worm screw on that, and it's ideal for doing fruit. The multi-star duplex chuck. I've got to be honest, I don't really use a woodworm screw hardly ever now. Um, yeah, I use small face plates. Oh, that bark. Bit of an inclusion in there. Stabilize it before you go any further, Mark. Hey. Stabilize it before you go any further. That came out as dust, didn't it? Get some star bond in there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just put the we'll bottle in there and spray the activator on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just. Uh... As I was saying, I don't use a wood boom screw. I... Nothing wrong with them. I've just gone off using them. Um, oh. I've got small face plates where I put four or five screws through. Yeah, I'm not, a lover, I'm not a lover of wood screw, woodworm screws. There's going to be an old musket ball fall out of there. Is it hard in there, Mark? Or? No, it's not that brilliant. Just get the worst of it out. And like Pete says, throw some star bond in there. Feel something as I was going down in. Here's my star bond. That works. Good opportunity to get the star bond down. So, you know, go do that for the camera. Get star bond. And don't forget to enter the competition for the star bond, which is being drawn yes. next Monday. Actually, I'll put the link in for last week's video, shall I? So people can yes, go please. and Comment as many times as you like. Starbond. Hashtag Starbond. I've also noticed a lot of people have been doing hashtag space and then Starbond. It's hashtag Starbond. There's no space. But I will put both variants in. Brian's saying you had the perfect opportunity to use the new shop vac. Um, 
I'm not sure what he's alluding to there, because I think that was just... He's, he's, he was talking about sucking the dust out rather than blowing it out. Torture, yeah, it's a show only, Brian. I don't think he wants to get any dust in, in the shop vac. It's only there for show. I don't want to use it. I don't want to get it dirty. Right. Just flood that with a bit of star bond. Bit of activator. I mean, that's going to... That, that hole is probably going to be there right the way through to the bottom of the bowl. And oh, I'm going to change change gouge now to my big half inch with a traditional grind. But you get a lot less bouncing problems if you've stabilised it than you do if you try to cut a hole. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys still see that or shall I go? Nigel Swaster is asking you, Mark, do you do many laminated bowls? No, I don't do many. I've done a few. I do want to do some big segmenting stuff. I know this leaves a lot of people very cold. cold. <laughs> but why well, take a big piece of wood, cut it all up, turn it into another big piece of wood? But uh, just give it a not long enough to be doing segmenting, in my view. Laminating, I've done laminating, but I'm never really happy with what you get. It's, um, it's a bit of a nuisance when you cut a beautifully shaped bowl and you're disappointed with the, the pattern and the grain. So this is the link for Mark's video from last week, or li live, sorry, from last week. So to enter the giveaway, the thousand giveaway, um, go over and leave a comment. Hashtag Starbond. And then Mark's doing the draw next Monday, I believe, aren't you, Mark? Yes. Terry's asking you to change camera. Why? I don't know. Okay. That's up. That That's your liking, sir? Neil M, anybody use the Nova G3 chuck? Looks like TS on offer with three sizes of jewels. Is that the one Terry was on about? No, Brian was on about the other night. Oh, no. Uh, no, it wasn't. Nova G3 is often on offer. It uses um, the same jaw sets as the Sorby and the Record Powers. Yeah. All right. The Nova G3, I think it's, um, I can't remember the size. I'm th I think it might be a three inch, not the four inch chuck. No, oh, okay. So Rob CP, where he's going to go at seg segmented bars in a few weeks. Be interesting to see. Now, I do quite like doing Battenbergs, where you get the um, four bits of stick, plane up the insides and glue them together. Can't believe the Battenberg. That doesn't take long. But, um, proper segmenting, yeah. Right, let's have a look and see what this looks like now. That must be awfully thin between the inner and outer wall, then. Oh, Glynis just said that the Nova Chucks turn the opposite way to a normal Chuck. Would the Chuck no, not anymore? Uh, not anymore. I think they've changed that now. Oh, right. Yeah.
Douglas has put a few comments in there about running his three-phase motor off of single-phase electric. That's what the um, speed controller inverter box that you can buy for it does for you. Good luck with that, Colin. The SC4s you can't get hold of at the moment. I was looking at Companion Chuck the other night and you can't get hold of them at the minute. Everybody's sold out. Must be waiting for a load more coming in from China then. Most probably. Yeah. Now the grind I've got on the bottom of this traditional is that's 60 degrees and there's a micro bevel on there as well. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I can just, just see that. Just, just see the micro bevel. So, although it's a traditional grind, it, also, it is also called a bottom feeder in America for the American viewers. Um, it does allow me to get in through the bottom, but it's quite strange using it because instead of being over here, you're, you're quite straight in and you travel across almost parallel with the bedways. It does give a lovely finish. Got a nice sheen on it, mate, off the tool. So, as you know, Mark, you just clocked up the hour. Okay, thank you. Don't forget, guys, if you like what Mark's doing, then please hit that like button. If you really like what Mark's doing, there's a link to buy me a coffee at the top of the page, which all goes back into making new, new and better loads for you. Now, what I could do at a later date, I could fill this with two-part epoxy and I could either fill it with coffee grinds or coffee grounds or um, brass dust. Tea, tea leaves, brass dust, copper dust, glitter, um, mica powders. For the purposes of tonight, I'm going to leave it open, but I am going to finish the inside, take the tenon off and have it as a finished bowl. But if you do come across something like this, there's no reason why you couldn't fill that void. It goes in about, about three-eighths, maybe half inch down inside. But I like it as it is. A bit, uh, bit nice. So I'm going to put the extractor back on and do the sounding again. Glenn's got Glenn's a desk Go on, sorry. Keith's in. Hi, Keith. Keith Circular Wood. Hi, Hi Keith. Keith. Been working at the museum up till now, so that's why he's late. Oh, good man. I bet it's nice to get Where's back. Keith? Where's your cakes? chat about different uh, chucks in the mm. chat um, in my experience I've used all sorts of chucks over the years and the deciding factor in my head now is do I like the chuck key and even better does it work with the chuck key I've already got so I haven't got to remember where two are 
Um, See, that's why, <laughs> and that really makes my decision now. That's why yeah. I don't use. That's why I don't use my SC three because I don't like the chuck key. That's a pain yeah. in the backside to get in the in the chuck. Yeah, that is what it comes down to for me. I mean, obviously, your chuck's got a fit of, a good range of jewels. Um, as long as it fits a good range of jewels, that's that covered. And then in use, it's just uh, do I like it or not? The chuck key rules it. I do just want to show you guys something. So let me just come back to the desk for a second. Now, just for the purposes of this um, demo, normally I would wear, the like I did for the first half for the outside, I'd put the power cap on just to finish the inside of the ball off. I'm holding this over my mouth and sanding with that just for speed. Okay? But this is you. And it's toxic. So don't mess about with this stuff. Because it will hurt you. Okay? We've only got one pair of lungs. Just for the sake of the, this demo. Taking a slight shortcut. Camera. Camera. No, <laughs> you can have to put for just be with the key. No, they are an awful key. Vicky's asking if it's scary to work with you. It's not scary. You just got to take. You just got to think of your health, Vicky. To be your perfect honest, when you whenever you're sanding, you should really be wearing a mask. Well, whatever yeah. it is, because your extraction is not going to draw every bit of dust through the extraction. So there's always a little bit of hard part just thrown around. So to be perfectly honest, you should always be wearing a mask. It's not toxic in a way that, you know, you, you touch it, you're going to die. It's not like that. No. Um, and it's any dust, path. including including baking flour, any dust is bad for you. So you should protect yourself against any dust. Mm -hmm. But you has a tendency to build up in the system and people who have turned you for years all of a sudden become allergic to it and they can't touch it anymore. So it's one of those that you... It, got to watch it it builds up and the thing is when you turn something what's old like this you can have a lot of spools in it as well for over the years and that's not good for you either but you should always keep dust protection in your mind when you're working with wood any wood That's great.
he's gone now, so I can be nice about Yorkshire Grit without appearing to be creeping. One of the <laughs> nice things about Yorkshire Grit is um, the finer particles of dust are obviously the worst particles. Of, they'll get through anything. And Yorkshire Grit fits into that niche and effectively captures that dust for you, preventing you from having problems with it. Yeah, that mask Mark is using there is a high-grade vapour mask, so that will barrier out a lot of the 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 d fine dust i use exactly the same mask as what mark's got there for um spraying so if it's going to stop errors or uh particles of spray it's going to stop dust of, like off of wood dust back on before I spray it in there. All right, so a bit of sanding sealer. This is uh, chestnut cellulose sanding sealer, and I thin mine. I know uh, Terry from Chestnut says, oh, you don't need to thin it. Yeah, I think you do. It's a bit thick. Yeah, I think you do as well. My argument is, if you would, if he didn't want you to thin it, he wouldn't sell cellulose standing. Cellular thinners. Right. Vicky is being talking about um, you and she didn't realize it was toxic. The link I've just put in there, Vicky, is to the Wood Database, and that's an article on wood toxicity and allergies. I'm just going to... I think with you, the toxin yeah. appears in the leaves and berries that uh, is there for insect control is made and pumped up through the, the heartwood um, to reach it. So you have a residual effect left in the timber itself. It's not as toxic as the berries, but it's still toxic. Zed's just joined. Hi, Zed. Hope you're well. Hi, Zed. Hey, Hi, Zed. 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 Back to the headstock. <clears throat> so, Dr. Grit, standing cedar first, done that. Now, because of this inclusion in here, it's going to get a little bumpy, and you will get a bit of grit trapped in there. Can't help it. But it will do the job. I think at this time of day, everybody in here can be Northern Hemisphere. To all of you, happy Midsummer's Eve. Midsummer's Eve, oh yes, the beginning Midsummer's of... Midsummer's Day, rather, Eve is yesterday. Beginning of... Midsummer's Day. Summer, isn't it, yeah. No, it starts winter tomorrow, mate. It's the end of summer. Huh? What, end of... end of summer today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, today's the longest day. We had, we had summer, day, yeah, so we, we, we only missed yeah. summer. Yeah, we, we go back into winter tomorrow. <laughs> Drew Rees Woodturn has just come in. Good evening. Hiya. Welcome along. Thanks for joining. Thank you to everybody that's joined. Also, I'd like to say thank you. I know the guys mentioned it earlier. Thank you to everybody that's bought me a coffee. Everything that I get for the buy me a coffee goes to uh, better cameras, better software, better setup. Uh, the cameras are all mounted on new stands. I had a very good deal the other day. A local guy was selling up his uh, disco setup. So I picked up some speaker stands and microphone stands, 15 of them for £25. It's an absolute bargain, and there's some brilliant, brilliant stands. Just makes it all better so that I can provide a better experience for you guys. Nigel saying, Mark, put the lid on the Yorkshire grit. Oh, I like to live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> live it on the edge. <laughs> it's almost empty anyway, it doesn't matter. Hmm. There you go, just for you, lid's on. Sorry, because I did and, drop it on the floor the other week. And Vicky saying the list of um, toxic woods that I just put in uh, is stuff she's never heard of. 
poor woman sat a bit for now. She won't leave the house. <laughs> There's only oh, two. Rex is in. Good evening, Rex. There's two in the UK oh, that are regular. That's Laburnum and you. You'll see a lot of both of those. And of UK timbers, that is a two majorly easily found pieces of toxic wood. When it comes to exotic wood, there's a hell of a lot more. A wood from elsewhere. There's a hell of a lot more. Um, you don't see as much of it because it's imported and it's more expensive. So, plus you tend to know about it because it's something you've bought particularly. Just keep going until the paper comes off clean. Also remember, with Yorkshire grit, we've said it before, we'll say it again, it's not a finish. It's an abrasive paste. It does give a nice finish because it's got beeswax and canuba and mineral oil and all sorts of good stuff in it, but it's not your final finish. Right, Zed has said he thinks the list, uh, the addition of the tree, hard work needs to be in there because he's very allergic to that. <laughs> so am I, Zed. Yeah. It makes me, I've got a terrible problem with hard work. It makes me skin leak. So that's just blowing some of that residual Yorkshire grid out of there, out of that big hole. I quite like that in there. Nice that Lewis has just come in. Hello, Hello. Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Flat out getting this uh, premiere ready for tonight. Lewis, um, is that premiere done? Go with the same finish on the inside as I did the outside, bit of Hampshire Sheen high gloss. Well done, Brian. Can you put yours in there as well, mate? Colin's asking, can Glyn needs to make a coarser grip, say 80 to 240? No, that's what a brace of paper's for. Now, with a Hampshire Sheen, less is more. Nigel's asking if you Nigel's asking if you use the microphone, Mark. No, I didn't. I do use no, it. If you do. Yes, I do use it. Yeah. Steve Flemings is a join. Hi Steve. Welcome. Sorry I'm late. I have to catch up later. It's all right. The microphone works very well on um, certain pieces of wood. I wouldn't say Pardon. necessarily a particular hardwood. But a particular piece of hardwood that comes up exceptionally well is worth taking that extra level. Hmm. Yeah. Another piece likes of hardwood. Of, likes of you. Yeah. It works brilliant it on you. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it is just like sanding to a higher grit. So, yeah. You, William you Kelly is there. It's like a 2000 grit, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Around about just over. William yeah. Kenny has said he's been turning wood for a long time now and never used Yorkshire grit. I might give it a try. The thing is, William, you only need to sand the 240. You sand the 240, you apply sand and sealer, then you use Yorkshire grit, and that will take it up to the equivalent grit of around about 1,000. With no dust. In about the same time. It takes about, on an average size piece, you're looking at about three, three or four minutes. Um, so if you're changing your grits, then obviously you use less time on each of the finer grits, but it works out about the same. And as Wayne says, no dust, that's the main thing. So there you go. Nice. Thanks one, Mark. Inside. Thank you. Beautiful. There's the outside. Does have a bit of a mark inclusion. That not there is that hole there. Yeah. So it does come through to that side. So that is a little bit thin. 
I'd say that's probably 10 mil, 8 mil, right the way around. You know, Mark, I normally I would, I would be pushing you to finish this, but I'm going to say, leave that tenon on. Yeah, I'm thinking that. That, that piece of wood is too beautiful not to finish that inside perfectly. And yeah. Sort that inclusion out. You take the yeah. tenon off and it's just going to be more difficult to do. Yeah, I'm going to leave the tenon on so I can re remount it, finish it better at it. I will do something with that inclusion, I think. Yeah. Yeah, if you take the tenon off, the... the because well, you haven't got a vacuum chuck, the option's gone. Yeah. So I would leave the tenon on and sleep so on I'll it. Come change camera, bring the guys back in. Put your clothes back on, guys. Oh, Again? No. Oh, no. So terrible, isn't it? Having to get dressed. Have you sure charged shine juice, or does it not sit well with the smoke? Obi shine juice. Obi shine juice is brilliant. Hmm. I had some. I gave it to Chit. I gave. What I had left to JP still hasn't used it. <laughs> like the Bee Juice, Bee Juice, yeah. Now, Obi Shine Juice is really, really good. Uh, so that's that's the bowl, just a box standard shape. It's nice. Got a couple of bit of bits of interest. There's a bit of uh, get the chainsaw marks just up there, but the other side managed to get them off. Bit of an inclusion just on the corner and of course the hole from hell inside which uh, isn't too bad but I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with that not quite sure what yet I think maybe I'll get some copper dust copper shavings from Hampshire Sheen because I think copper would look nice in there just to pick up all the reds mm. there's beautiful beautiful piece of wood nice pattern isn't it yeah, you does all the talking. It makes an average wood turner look pretty good. Evening, Danny. Dan Danny boy's asking why steel sc scores to drop a lot. Because I drop everything. <laughs> he keeps, drop <laughs> keeps dropping it. Danny boy, that everything. obviously means that you've not been watching Steve often enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. No, um, my, oh, I got as well. It's got a bit of texture on the bottom of the pole. Nice bowl, Mark. I love the pattern, and that's got some beautiful features in that bit of wood. Yeah, it's a lovely piece of wood. Really happy with that. Really happy how that's come out as well. Lovely finish on it. Even if I do say so myself. Despite the um, toxicity and, and the very fine dust that it tends to make anyway, meaning you've got to take precautions, you is always worth the effort. <laughs> right. It is said that he's, he doesn't think he's ever seen you around where he is. Um, it there is a species of you that comes from around you. Um, it's called Z. Western Pacific. Yeah, it's Western called it's Pacific called it's, it's either it's either Pacific you or Western Pacific you. Um, uh, the other the other one is the European you, obviously that we get in the UK. Okay. Small some comments coming in there, Mark. I'll tell you the truth, I think I might do a U bull on Wednesday night myself. Oh, he's copying you now, Mark. It, can you? No You'll such thing as copying. Oh, no such thing as copying. No, I'm not, not. No, what I'm actually doing, I said this to Mark the other day, um, I'm going to try out the that Simon Hope new addition to his um, attachments, the, the pear shape. Yes, the pear shape. Yeah, I'm oh, just yeah. Back. yeah. yeah so I'll be doing it. PJ, what, what country are you in? But he can't get Hampshire Sheen in his country. Um, boy, you can, if you can't get Hampshire Sheen, you might be able to get chestnut products. So you've got Woodwax 22. You've got beeswax, OB Shine Juice. Um, Any beeswax will do, will not it? You butte do some nice finishes. Um, you've got Danish oil, lemon oil, hemp oil. So you could do oil finishes, mineral oil, butcher's block. General finishes. All They're right, okay. In um, America. I am definitely not doing you on Wednesday because it seems every bugger else this week's doing the, doing you. Yeah, Keith <laughs> got you <laughs> ranked for tomorrow's lunchtime. I'm turning you tomorrow evening, Andy H. <laughs> and Thursday. Right, it's going to be a you week for the no, UK no, this week. No, no, no. I'm I'm going to do Holly on Wednesday. Oh, I like Holly as well. Holly cuts so beautifully. 
But anyway, give you a final look at the bowl. Nice. So that's the inside. That's the outside. There's the textured ring from the bottom. And I'll take the tenon off at a later date. That's the beauty with the tenon. I can remount that now. Finish the inside. Turn it around. Take the turn it around. Take the tenon off. But I've still managed to keep a nice depth of the bowl. Right, so tomorrow lunchtime is Right. Yeah. True, true, true Rex is asking me, have you turned the crotch from a tree? I've turned loads of them. Yeah. Just about every other week, it yeah. feels like. There you go. That's a, that was a crotch piece. That was my video last week. So that was a crotch piece. Came up that way. Two ends of the branches. I copy Wayne. Wayne does loads of loads of those hollowed out pieces so tomorrow we've got circular wood by keith at one o'clock and then andy h is for turning tomorrow evening um andy is it up at seven or eight o'clock but if you go over to andy's channel it's rich not on yeah. tomorrow then. no no right. um wednesday evening you've got wayne the wood turner at eight o'clock and straight after wayne if i can manage to remember to press record on my camera tomorrow there'll be a premiere for me tomorrow night which hopefully will be one of these which i turned the other day for my video but forgot to press record because i'm an idiot Zed, zed's got a premiere tomorrow night as well it's cool? got a premiere tomorrow night go and watch and that andy's, andy's on at the eight o'clock tomorrow eight o'clock brilliant wednesday night wayne the wood turner followed by a premiere for me speaking of premieres we've got two tonight one from Brian at Hardwood Turning straight after, and the other one from Lewis Klondike Craftsman at half past 10 UK time. Thursday lunchtime will be Brian from Hardwood Turning, 1 p.m. Thursday evening will be Andy H again, covering for Scott. Friday lunchtime will be Wayne. No, Turner. no, 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 won't. No, with not. the wind strap. Oh, no, wind no, no, you're traveling. You're traveling. Right, so. There's space available if somebody wants to step in, cover for Wayne on Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, Friday evening, 7.45, folks, Battle of the Makers on Steve, that's K Crafts channel. So that's our monthly um, Makers pub quiz I will be in, I will be in place in time for that. Good. Good. Um, basically, just to miss about. It's a laugh. If you haven't seen it, it's a, it's a scream. It's, it's really funny. Um, so, uh, uh, Lee's asking, how much harder is turning the crotch from routine grain? No harder. No harder. Sharp tools as always, and it's as good the same as anything else. Yeah. Just figure you've got the grain running in different directions. There's not true bowl or spindle orientation. Because mm. the two crotches, obviously... Go out at angles, but it's just well, yeah, no. see because you, you can turn um, a bowling crotch from a crotch yeah. piece as well. Yeah, split the crotch down through the center and turn it that way, or you could turn it as a spindle with the two crotches going off either end. Um, where were we Friday evening and then Saturday? Probably be the usual Ed Oliver, Tony Turner, Sunday BSK Crafts, and Jamie Premier. And Caitlin Premier. So that's that's it for the rest of the week. But everybody and during my, the week. Will, and Wayne's Premier. When's Sunday night? What time, Wayne? Sunday night. Usually. Probably about quarter past nine, the usual. Yeah, cool. So that's it for me. I've waffled enough. Thank you very much for popping along. Really enjoy your company. I hope I entertain. I hope you like what I do. And I hope you get some inspiration and some ideas. Get in the workshop. Have a go. Remember why I started this channel. Yes, I'm disabled. Doesn't mean I'm not finished. I can still get up, get in here and do stuff. And if I can, you can. Simple as that. No excuses. Okay. Thank you to my guys. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Thanks for helping out. And I'll say good night. Goodbye. God bless. Take care. Be nice to each other. Good night. night, -night. Have a great week. Cheers, everyone.